This video demonstrates an attempt to uh, free up a Crystalline's HD, which is uh, fibrosed into the uh, capsular bag. Uh, the patient is, uh, again, three months post-op. And the fibrosis on uh, both sides of the lens have caused it to vault anteriorly in a symmetric fashion from both hinges. The haptics are uh, firmly in the bag and the loops are fibrosed into the equator of the bag. I've made two paracentesis and then add viscoelastic into the anterior chamber. And I first try to push the lens posterior, but there's so much fibrosis the lens will not even budge. So then I attempt to uh, separate the anterior capsule from the posterior capsule. The anterior capsule is fibrosed down to the posterior capsule as it should in a surgery where we have made the anterior capsulotomy larger than the optic. The uh, correct maneuver is to uh, find the area where the anterior capsule vaults over the haptic so you can get under that and then unzipper it in both directions using visco dissection. The adhesions over the capsule are very difficult to lice, as you can see from the white fibrotic area. More viscoelastic is instilled and uh, more unzippering of the capsule is performed. Once I have adequately unzippered the capsule, I will attempt to uh, rotate the lens clockwise and counterclockwise to see if I can free up the uh, polyamide loops from the equator of the bag. To get a better angle towards the uh, area of fibrosis, I make a third paracentesis. And now I'll take the uh, Connor wand and attempt to rotate the lens. But as you can see, the fibrosis is very uh, strong and the lens simply will not budge. More viscoelastic is added under the haptic this time as I rotate the cannula along the uh, poly polyamide loops where they attach to the uh, equatorial capsular bag, hoping that this will uh, separate the uh, lens from the fibrosis. Again, rotating the lens and even pulling it centrally show no let up in the uh, adhesions. You can see I again try to push the lens posteriorly to see if we freed up anything and the lens just pops back into the anterior position.
up until this about a week prior to the surgery, the lens was sitting in an ideal position with 20-20 vision and uh, J2 up close, and the patient suddenly became nearsighted. You can see some freeing up of the lens, but still a lot of adhesion. You can see if I pull the lens centrally, you'll start seeing the capsular bag pull inward, and I don't want to uh, have any zonular dehiscence. So I now take uh, Jack Singer's advice, and that is to take a Sinsky hook above and below the haptic, pointing the uh, tip of the Sinsky hook slightly towards the lens implant, and taking it back and forth in the equator to sever the adhesions. The Sinsky is sharper and uh, tends to cut the adhesions much more completely. Now I'll rotate, and you can see now the loop is separated. Push it the other way. And now both loops are separated from the capsular bag without damage to the bag itself. I'll set the uh, inferior haptics and loops in the anterior chamber and now go to work on the superior set of loops. Here comes the Sinsky hook again. Again, pushing against those adhesions and the uh, loops on top of the lens and below the lens. And now I'll try to rotate that lens again. One loop off. Pull the other loop off, and now the lens is completely free. Next, I'll reseat the lens into the capsular bag and rotate it at least a few clock hours because when you reset the lens, you want to be away from the old area of fibrosis. And then I'll refill with some viscoelastic and insert a 13 millimeter CTR, trying to prevent the forces that uh, contracted the bag previously. I like to insert this on top of the lens rather than under it. One operative note would be that I think I would move to using the Sinsky hook earlier. If I had to do the case again, I think that just severs the adhesions very nicely and can make this case much shorter. All that remains is to uh, remove the viscoelastic with irrigation, aspiration, and seal up the wound.